Hello and welcome to Leviathan News. Uh, big day today as SPF is currently being sentenced to prison. Not just regular prison, but federal bang me in the ass prison that uh, you just don't get out of. And we have on resident legal expert, Alex Golubisky. Welcome, sir. Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it, wrong Sam, guys, wrong Sam to put that on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's put that back up. Where where did that go? Uh, that one. Uh, what was the wrong sim? Oh right, Garrett, throw that back up again. It's there. Okay, there. Yeah, wrong sim. <laughs> I'm saying the right sim, I think. No. Ah, wrong sim. Now I get it. Now I get it with the way it is. <laughs> so apologize. Uh, I just wanted to, po Garrett. Thanks for joining today. I know this isn't Friday, but uh, we have a lot to talk about here. Um, let's hop right into it. Inner City Press uh, is in Matthew Russell, right? Is in the courtroom right now. He's been live streaming the uh, or like live tweeting the sentencing guidelines. And let's just run through the thread, right? So uh, here's a pic of him coming into the uh, courtroom. I think this one's a little bit old. Um, this pic, it may be from today. It doesn't look like him. Um, but first, he comes in, courtroom is full. Lawyers are in. Okay, everybody's in. They read through the defense papers. The prosecutors are introduced. Uh, okay, Judge Kaplan says, apart from the guideline issues, uh, which are going to take up next, I adopt the pre-sentence report. The guidelines dispute has been fully briefed. We'll start with the contention about the loss over the $550 million. Uh, So she rejected the defense's argument about loss, both on the law and the facts. The assertion that customers and creditors will be paid in full is, mi is misleading. Uh, the defendants equate loss with dollar volume in the bankruptcy case. Investors and lenders were also injured parties. The crimes here include taking FTX customer money to which defendant had no right to and using it no speculative uh, or using it uh, in speculative investments by Alameda on a variety of other things. Uh, a fortuitous run up in the value of some cryptocurrencies bears no relation to the gravity of the crimes that were committed. A thief who takes his loot to Las Vegas and successfully bets is not entitled to a sentencing reduction, even if payback. For the reasons well articulated by Mr. Ray, that people will be paid back is speculative. So I find the loss amount readily exceeds $555 million. The top tier, I find investors lost $1.7 billion. Lenders lost 1.3 billion and customers lost 8 billion. Um, yeah, so this is all kind of in line. I mean, like we, they, they pretty much sold the bottom on everything. I, I believe Solana was like 10 cents. Uh, all the other terrible tokens they had were trading really low. The Bitcoin that they didn't have or maybe had a little bit was trading at like 15 to 20,000. Uh, so even though it's run up a lot then, I mean, Solana traded up to $200. Uh, it doesn't matter in this case. No, and, and and I think the judge is just not willing to let go along with any of this kind of speculative stuff about about what could happen. And and I don't know that uh, um, they're going to uh, did, did he ever really had a shot on this because you, you know the the issue of um, the total amount of loss, which. I think we might have even talked about it on here. I can't remember. That's like the biggest issue in the sentencing guidelines because, like, you're talking about when you're at that top tier, which is 550 million of of, of, of total loss. It's it's like a 30 level upward departure or something like that. So so like that was the big argument in sentencing. And once once the judge found in favor of the prosecution, which was like the most likely outcome by a lot, it, that was kind of the ball game. Uh, the stuff that's going on now with the victim impact statement and all that it's important you know it's it's uh and in all the uh, upward departures for sophisticated means and leadership role and and uh um, the perjury the perjury findings are, are like a big deal it's actually like a pet peeve of mine in, in federal criminal cases but well that's next that actually so uh, judge kaplan says on obstruction of justice i find that mr bankman freed's text to the former general counsel did in fact constitute attempted witness tampering. I make three perjury findings based on trial testimony. I find that Bank and Freed uh, perjured testimony at trial. He falsely testified that until fall of 2022, he had no knowledge that Alameda spent uh, FTX customer funds. And he falsely testified that he first learned of the $8 billion loss in October 2022. 
Finally, he falsi uh, falsely testified that repayment of third-party loans by Alameda would require Alameda to borrow more customer funds from FTX. Uh, throws it back to SBF's lawyer. We don't want to address those points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so, so, you, what, what's going? So, so this is one of the weird foibles of, of federal criminal court, right? Is that SBF went to trial on like what the government had charged him with, and he was found guilty on all counts. But what the judge here is doing, and this is not unique to SBF, this happens in almost every federal sentencing or, or the majority of them, is that even though what a federal judge can do in sentencing is they can consider criminal conduct that wasn't charged and wasn't proved beyond a reasonable doubt in front of a jury in coming up with the sentence. So I, don't get me wrong, I don't feel bad for SBF, like what's happening to him is happening to him, and I don't actually think it makes a huge difference in this particular case. But make no mistake about what's going on here. The judge is making us a finding of fact, right, that SBF perjured himself and SBF obstructed justice. The jury never found that. The government never proved that beyond a reasonable doubt. But but the but but the judge is saying, well, based on like what I saw, your testimony from the bench and the facts, I'm making the decision that uh, that, that you uh, perjured yourself and obstructed justice. And uh, and this happens all the time in federal sentencing. Um, but you see there that that tweet ten, that tweet ten minutes ago uh, about uh, uh, offense level sixty. Uh, that's that's the game. That's the game, because anything above forty three is uh, is as 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 he says uh, is it doesn't go higher than that. You're 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 effectively at eleven once you hit 40, 44, Right? There's there's no more there's no more to go. Is that without and, parole uh, as well too? So so the way federal sentencing works is is that um, as as they say, federal time is real time. There's no such thing as federal parole. Um, I believe you can get a 10% sentence reduction after you're incarcerated for things like good behavior and that type of thing. It's not guaranteed. But if you get life in federal prison, that means that you will spend your life in federal prison, that, that you will die. It, it's Life in federal prison is effectively a death sentence. You, you will never leave wow. the federal prison. Uh, and and so and so it's uh yeah this is this is like probably the most likely outcome but definitely the outcome that spf was trying to avoid obviously he's he's going to pursue his appeal um that, which is his right i think that, that the appeal is largely going to be based on how the trial was conducted uh sentencing is difficult to appeal uh sen sentencing is is uh uh it's it, it's very difficult to say that on appeal, uh, the judge sentenced you in, incorrectly. Um, I don't think, based on the judge saying that he's going to that they're going to do a downward departure, um, uh, you know, I, I I I expect that we won't see life, but I think we could very easily see um, a uh, you know a number that that makes it unlikely that SBF will ever uh, uh, be outside an institution. That's that's. Probably the most likely outcome at this point. I'm. Uh, it, it sucks we don't have a betting pool. You know, we should we should really. This this is this is like if there ever was one. a time for what's a computer key, this is it. You know, it probably is one. <laughs> can I can I ask a question? Do you think that if he had been more uh, like cooperative during the trial and also hadn't perjured himself like this during those three times, that uh, it would have affected the sentencing? Not really, not really, because because you're talking about you're talking about uh, let, let's say he had a, a substantial cooperation downward departure. That's five. They get rid of all the like perjury stuff and, and that like you're still above 43 yeah. at that point. You know, it's 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 not it, it, it's it's not a close call, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, you don't want to mess with federal prison or federal. And, and, and you know, I mean, like, look, it was, uh, it, it was. He never had the opportunity. He was the target. He never. He there was no. There was no opportunity for him to cooperate. There was no. Um, there was no real defense he had. And and um, you know, it's it's. Uh, there's. I, I don't think that there's another way that this really could have turned out. Can I uh, add a little of my own uh, perspective here? 
I think. Uh, sure. First of all, I think that uh, you know he's uh, he did some criminal uh, activities and he should be punished. I'm uh, definitely not the one to say uh, for how long, but he should be uh, for sure punished uh, for uh, all the stuff that uh, went down. I will say though that in my opinion, the the, the reason that uh, it didn't really matter, uh, like uh, whether he cooperated or not, is that uh, I think that. Uh, as much as he's uh, to blame and he and again should be punished he's in my opinion mostly the scapegoat here because uh, so many people were also involved within uh, with all of this and i think that uh, he's basically getting like it, it was pretty obvious in my opinion at least that he will get like an an insane like punishment to like uh, to 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 like to try to put it all directly all 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 on him and trying to hide a lot of uh, stories which are much uh, more uh, like serious and severe and trying to protect a lot of people who in my opinion were uh, uh, also <laughs> involved in very like uh, unkosher stuff as uh, we say it uh, uh, like uh, as the Jewish side of me, like my whole side is Jewish, so like like I mean, and the Jewish uh, saying, and I think that uh, like uh, there was so much corruption, political stuff, and all that, and basically they're just trying to throw a lot of shade on that by like uh, crucifying uh, SBF completely, and uh, and uh, all of a sudden it will all dissolve, like no one else should be also tried. I think this, I, I I don't really agree with that. Sam was the head of things. He knew everything that was happening. Um, he hired his whole team. Uh, and, you know, like maybe, Alex, you can talk about this. But typically when, when they go to trial like this, you know, they flipped everybody. Like all of Sam's co-conspirators, Caroline and everyone else, essentially pleaded within like a day, right? To plead guilty, got a good terms from the, the feds. I don't know what they're going to get. Maybe Caroline gets seven to 15 years or something. Uh, maybe the other guys get five to five to 10. But I think in this type of high profile case, th they have to come in hard against the ringleader, right? It's it's just, it, it's a uh, PR uh, thing that, that the leader needs to take the brunt of the... Yeah, the, but I don't the, think he's actually leader. Uh, like with the SB with the specific stuff that we're talking about FTX yes but it's all a big cover up for the corruption where like political corruption and stuff like that like like not what that is actually about like the bigger story here which uh, is trying to like in my opinion uh, be covered uh, is uh, is a story much bigger than uh, Robin FTX. It's a story of political corruption, and uh, like uh, no one is going like that's the bigger crime here. Even I don't know. I don't think so. Like there was eight, there was eight billion dollars worth of customer deposits lost. Uh, DeFi mm. advisor. Like if you want to talk not, about if you listen, want to talk about they're, they're, like, you're, you're talking you're talking about no. Listen, you're talking about like fifty to sixty million dollars worth of political donations, which in in no. In sizable comparison to the amount of customer losses, no, no. Is this is just the surface. You're just talking about the surface. I'm talking about uh, like what's within. So that's why we, I think, uh, I, I'm, I, I, yeah, think I accept your opinion. Like it's cool. Like you, you, like the the main the main victims here were the people that lost eight billion dollars. That's it. Uh, and 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 whether there was some like political backroom dealings, maybe. But at the end of the day, like the 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 political outcomes that Sam wanted never came to fruition and led to massive backlash from a uh, political yeah, he party. Was just a tool. It, it, I don't think he was a tool. You know, he's a smart guy. Like, you know, he's, no, a, he's, he's a really, he's a really smart guy. He uh, facilitated all this and he used his, his like intelligence of the, of the system that he built to defraud people to the term of, yeah, of eight billion dollars. Right? Of course, of course he's a criminal. And that's why he's being sentenced to life in prison. Yeah, but there are other criminals who are not sentenced. And that's that's what I'm talking about. I, th I think I think in a certain sense you're all talking past each other because it's two separate issues, right? One is like what what is the criminal culpability of SBF? And I think that it's like pretty clear that that like what wh whatever else is going on, he made the bed he's in right now. So so like that's that. And and like I, you know, I, I don't know that 
there's anybody out there who's like really crying any tears for SBF. Um, but 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 to to to, to DeFi Advisor's point, like there there is a lot of other stuff that's going on, right? That, that that's in the sort of uh, around around FTX, and I do think that. Um, it's very convenient for a lot of other for, for a lot of other people who were only tangentially related to FTX, but maybe dependent on FTX in terms of like promoting their own agendas, which which may or may not, which may have been like bad for for sort of crypto generally or the industry generally, that can kind of get a pass now because they're like, well, look at what a bad guy SBF is. They're going to put him in prison for for a hundred years and and. Uh, and so I, you know, I do think that it's it's like the DCCPA was fucked up, and like it was really bad, and it was like a background, a, a, a backroom deal that like if it hadn't been for FTX going through, would probably be the law of the land with respect to um, DeFi and probably crypto more broadly in the U.S. right now, and it'd probably be um, a, a much worse situation. Uh, because the real purpose of that law was to uh, create a regulatory moat around incumbents like FTX, and uh, and and I think we would see a lot more centralization and just a lot more uh, sort of like uh, uh, chilling of of the good aspects of, uh, in my opinion, the good aspects of the industry. And and I don't think that it's I don't think we want to lose sight of that because, you know. And I guess it's like I am pretty jaded about the federal criminal court system. I don't really think it serves like that much of a purpose in terms of like deterring conduct. I don't think that like I mean it's easy to say, oh well, SBF's like the one who took on the risk of 100 years in prison, but he didn't obviously think he was doing that when he was doing all the crap he was doing because he had a bunch of lawyers telling him that you're fine, right? And and uh, and and so you know I I don't view this as like any kind of deterrent to the next person who wants to run a scam like FTX, right? Because I guarantee you the next person is going to be like, yeah, all right, I get it. SBF got 100 years in prison or whatever the number ends up being, but I'm smarter than that guy. So, so you know, <coughs> it's not going to happen to me. And I think that's true across the board, but like set that aside, right? I mean, I mean, the, 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 uh, SPF goes to prison now, and so what, right? Like, like we still don't have, we still have regulatory agencies in the U.S. that are very aggressively uh, uh, pursuing crypto without clear rules, right? We still have, you know, sort of tax rules that are extremely unclear in the U.S. Um, and and it's and and to me, I don't and and getting to like what what DeFi advisor was saying, I don't think we're out of the woods in terms of like what SBF was trying to do politically. I, I think it's very uh, likely that, that we will see a law similar to the DCCPA become the law of the land. In, uh, but, but, but you know, Alex, my uh, I think my key point here is that it's not actually uh, SBF that was trying to push the DCCPA or uh, however it's uh, called. He was the instrument uh, by which it was pushed because the actual agenda serves a lot of powerful people and they were pushing it and true maybe they were paying just a few uh, dozens of millions for it but they weren't doing it just for eight billion uh, in ftx like they were doing it to legally control like uh, a whole lot of our money and uh, limit our rights and that is in my opinion the much bigger crime that you are right sam it didn't actually eventually happen but first of all we are not out of the woods like alex uh, says and uh, if you if you want to judge intent that is at least like in my opinion that is much more severe because this is like a crime against uh, all of America or all of society, like in my opinion, that is the biggest uh, scandal which is being actually covered here. And uh, le just like you, Alex, uh, and you said, like uh, like Sam, Sam is not innocent. Like, uh, but personally, I do think that he's an instrument here, and uh, he's very smart on some aspects. But I think that on others, he was uh, completely uh, very not only like malicious. He was also, in my opinion, very just uh, not smart and arrogant. And I think that you're right. He's gonna pay for it, but other people did other stuff, and they should pay as well. Well, hubris leads to the downfall of of man. Indeed, indeed. indeed man. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that like 
uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the issue, right, is is that like what the U.S. government, the, the danger that crypto poses from the perspective of the SEC, right, or the or perhaps even the government more broadly, and certainly from the perspective of the CFTC. Um, it's not really about the amount of assets that are tied up in crypto and like rampant fraud and all that stuff, because those it's kind of numbers compared to uh, uh, the, uh, the, the overall sort of U.S. capital markets. But like the real threat that crypto poses is like disintermediation, right? Is like is like creating like very robust peer to peer systems to transact. That is actually a structural threat to the U.S. government. And so. It's it's not like uh, what 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 you know. I think what DeFi Advisor is saying is 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 I don't necessarily sign on to like this idea that there was a um, you know explicit conspiracy to say okay we're gonna like push SBF out in the forefront. I, but I do think that the emergence of somebody like SBF and FTX right as like a centralized intermediary that sits on top of crypto is very very useful to the u.s government and you know we have that now i mean frankly sort of segue into the next kind of big piece of legal news from this week like what what the government does you know what the u.s government has with coinbase is sort of that same centralized intermediary right and and the question i think that's kind of being meted out in the coinbase versus sec case is like what the contours of the relationship between Coinbase and the U.S. government are going to be, and uh, and you know, I mean, I like Coinbase as a company. I guess like it's fine um, compared to FTX, it's great, but I'm not like you know like a huge Coinbase homer or anything like that. But but you know, it if 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 the U.S. government finds a way to king make a company like Coinbase like they wanted to do with FTX, it's the same problem. And uh, just responding to a comment, DeFi Advisor is awesome. <laughs> uh, look, I, I think on who you ask, man. You know? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think there's. I don't think there's a grand conspiracy. I mean, Sam was very smart. He surrounded himself with a lot of smart people, and we we as an industry exist in a regulatory vacuum with a lot of questions about what the future of the industry is going to be, how laws are going to be crafted. And uh, it makes sense, especially if you come from a, uh, a like a background where your family, your friends have connections, they understand lobbying, they understand how laws get passed inside the United States. Like, I think it's just naive, DeFi advisor, to think that, you know, if you're a company that gets to a certain size, that you're just going to kind of not engage in any lobbying. You're not going to spend on any sort of political domain. No, 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 no. Let me finish. I, oh, I think it's. I think like especially in the American system, like the way that things are run is that like when you get to a certain size, especially when you're you're trying to become an, an incumbent, like it makes an incredible amount of sense to to spend. You don't have to spend that much. I mean, it, it's you know he was distributing a 500k here, a million there. Like these are all for re-election campaigns, right? And and you just want to create those relationships with lawmakers who. You know, you tell a story, you say, hey, we're the good guys here. You know, we want to protect the American consumer. You know, we're doing all these good things. Uh, and and you craft those relationships in a way which allows you to then uh, get favorable legislation, which which protects your company. I mean, it's it's no different than any other industry that has existed inside the United States for its, its entire founding. And like I, I know that like lobbying always gets a kind of uh, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth, but you know these are billion-dollar companies trying to protect protect their their revenue streams and and also uh, solidify their existence in a space which is just devoid of any uh, you know major regulation or major laws and regulations which would allow them to to grow even further. So I don't think it's a conspiracy. I definitely think that uh, he was sophisticated in his understanding of the of of how the the U.S. Congress works and what he would need to do to interact with them and also the regulatory agencies as well too. And, you know, he exploited it to the, to the maximum effect. And you saw that in both the political donations and also the, the, the ability of, of him to, to get these meetings with certain officials. Now we don't know what was said during those things, but you know, like we all kind of know that if you come in with a warm introduction, 
you have friends that are friends of these people. They say glowing things about you. They say you're like this whiz kid, wonder kid who's like saving the world. You're like super altruistic. You know, they'll probably take a pretty good like view of you. And like, I, I want to go back and like remind everybody that pre uh, pre FTX collapse, you know, Sam was a darling. You just have to go read the what everyone wrote about him. I mean, they 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 literally couldn't get enough of Sam. I mean, he he yeah. had made himself out to be, and this is even in the um, what his like mom is saying, right? Like, let's go back to this thing. There's after the after the the guidelines came out, setting at sixty, they they go and they. Uh, uh, well, I want to come back to the Sol Solomon Cromwell thing a little bit later, but uh, they go to his mom. And uh, I want to just go through this. Uh, his mom yeah. essentially says he's a nice guy. Like he's always yeah. been super altruistic. Uh, you know, Madoff stole from Holocaust survivors. That is not Sam. He didn't want to inflict any pain on any way. Sam yeah. was not a ruthless financial serial killer. He wasn't predatory. He makes decisions with math in his head, not malice in his heart. His mom says he is misunderstood. It's easy to slot people in the old fashioned story of the, of the greedy swindler. Uh, Sam never scurried away with money. He stayed until the end. Um, and he's an awkward math nerd that's in veganism and is an altruist, right? Or effective altruist. Yeah, but, but again, you know, this is like, uh, honestly, I think that on this uh, specific uh, one, uh, I think you're missing the forest from the, from the trees, as they say it, or uh, whatever. I, I think it's, again, I like, wait, I, wait, I, wait, I just, wait, wait, I just let me, that it's, you know, like, uh, you, you're non American, right? And so what? So what, man? Listen, listen. But uh, again, Sam, I, I think you're uh, not really uh, like uh, getting to the root of what I'm uh, trying to say. Because everything that you're saying about SBF and the fact that he should be punished, I'm not arguing with you, Sam. He should be punished. And I'm not saying that I, uh, uh, as especially as someone who doesn't live in America, uh, uh, like can I, I literally started by saying it uh, that like I, I don't know what sh what his sentence should be, and he's a criminal. Like put that aside. We're, on that we agree, and that's pretty much all, pretty much like all you're claiming. What I'm claiming is, uh, Sam, there are other people involved and a bigger story. And it's been two opinion, years. Now. Listen, man, listen, listen. No, no, no. Look, it's been two. But I, years. But I want to convey my message as well. Like, like, it has been two years now since. So what? But Sam, and 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 the government has had full access to every single file piece of paper. Again, Sam, and again, just, just let me finish my point. Sam, listen, listen, Sam. Just, just let me finish no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. It's but, been but, but I, but I was uh, speaking, man. Stop interrupting me. The, the federal government has had full access. I'm literally speaking, man. Access has had, the government has had full access to every single document that FTX ever had. They have all of Sam's text messages that he ever sent. They have all of his co-conspirators, all their text messages as well, too. Plus, they have an entire swath of other emails and documents. But I'm agreeing with else. you. I'm literally and, agreeing and, with and, you. And, and to think that there is some like vast conspiracy to hide all this, I, it, it's it's just to be honest on that part exactly. You're the naive because you I'm keep like, uh, like the, the, the no 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 on this one man. You're completely the, the, the naive man. The on this one you're completely the, the naive. The the, the prosecutors are working. But the again, case. just uh, let me know when you finish because have, I have, have an ethics have a word of ethics. They, they, they have to maintain a certain standard and, and to think that like there's commands coming down from somewhere, right. To, to hide oh, evidence right. or, or anything. It just doesn't make sense. Like the, the, the federal you, it doesn't make sense or whatever, but again, uh, Sam, you're, like there's you're, no conspiracy you're, here. You're, you're Sam, Sam stole all this no, money. No, no, no. Sam stole all this money. And then, wait and, a minute. Why? Cause you said it, Sam. No, I mean, he stole it. isn't because you said it. Like, come on, man, come on. Th that, that's why I'm saying that you are the naive here. I'm like, saying you're delusional. And and I think no, that I'm you can say you whatever, know. Sam. Like you can say I'm delusional, and you can say like the the sky is green. Like it, it doesn't matter, man. Like things are what they are. Yeah, what, what, and what is that? And what is that? Please, because like we, we've seen the mountain of are, evidence come okay, out. Okay, okay, listen, listen. Do you want to listen or do you want to just? Uh, no, like, please, keep please lecturing. explain. And 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 if you want to keep lecturing, let me know. Like I can I can I can keep listening if you if you want. I no, please, practice. please explain. I I, I, like listen. no, share, share, please. All right, as I was saying, like several times. I agree with you on everything regarding SBF himself. He's a criminal. He was the head of the conspiracy of, of whatever was going on uh, with, uh, with FTX. He's the criminal mind there. He should be punished exactly the way the American legal system should judge him. Can we agree on that? I mean, it's, he's already been sentenced. He's going to prison for life. So okay, so so, uh, but I'm agreeing with you. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you're not uh, like uh, I don't know. Maybe that uh, there's a language barrier, as they say. 
but like I'm agreeing with you about whatever that like uh, SBF is being sentenced or whatever and his punishment. Okay, that's how the American legal system works. Great. What I'm saying is that you are missing the forest for the trees. You mean? are looking at the tree, which is uh, SBF, and you're not realizing that there is a much bigger story, not, uh, just, uh, much worse, okay? That uh, the fact that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't meant, like the whole story is not for FTX to be there. Someone wanted FTX there with the DCCPA in order to uh, uh, have a regulation that benefits whoever they want to uh, benefit. And the fact that you don't want to believe it, in my opinion, you are the naive. You think I am naive. I, I think what, you what are. I, and I that's cool. I said exactly that. I said that that once you hit it, once you hit a certain size in, a, in an industry with that doesn't have clear regulatory guidelines and and rulemaking around it, and also laws. But it, the game it, is who will control the guidelines, Sam. You don't understand. Of course, that. and it's a battle between the incumbents. That's how it always happens. That you can you can go back. No, and it's not about. You think it's the exchanges, and I'm telling you, it's the people behind it. That's, we've that, we've had this, we've had this story over and over and over in in the the hunt like the. 200 plus years that the U.S. existed. You look at any industry, whether it's the oil industry, the coal industry, cars, anything else, it's always the same. When, the, when there was a brand new well, industry. It's always the same because it's always like powerful people moving the wheels of- uh, so, But exactly, they have money and they want to secure their incumbency. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't I don't understand what their, what their whole thing I, is. I'm not, uh, even I'm Taylor, not gonna convince you, I'm not gonna convince you. I wanna bring cool. this comment up. Even Taylor McRae, who's an avid listener of Leviathan, uh, says that he is a former he is a former lobbyist and he agrees with me completely uh that you know this is just how the lobbying game works if you have money and you can make political contributions it's just it's just the you know what you get involved with coinbase makes contributions like every major us company that is involved with crypto is making contributions to the congress people that that they want to get elected so that they can get laws passed in not what i'm saying again but okay like come on i don't think that uh, we're going to understand each other on this one because as i was saying like it's not about the company that's trying to advance as a company it's about who wants this specific company to win and why. That's the point. We and usually, like, usually uh, have... we can, but we can uh, like we, we don't have to like uh, like I'm not trying to convince you, Sam. I understand that you uh, that you see it differently, and I was uh, and I see it differently as well. No, so I, I I think that that like uh, FTX probably was supported by several law firms mm -hmm. that have an army of lawyers who were, were no taking... no. Not that. Hey guys, not that. Uh, guys, Alex bills at an astronomical rate. Let's get him back. Yeah, yeah Alex. All right, I, uh, let's turn it back to you. What's your whole opinion on this thing? Um, well, no, I mean, I mean, I think that that it's it's uh, it, like I said, I, I I don't think that there's any like I, I'm not going to sit here and defend the federal criminal justice system because I think it's fundamentally unfair, right? That being said, I don't really give a shit what happens to SBF. Like, fuck that guy. You know, like honestly, like fuck him. Like, like he he's a crook. He's like, if he got away with it, I don't really give a shit. He didn't get away with it. So you're saying bad system, but good results. <laughs> I know. I think it's the result we have, right? I don't I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's just the result that we have, right? And 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 it's and it's like I don't think it's gonna deter any any conduct. I don't think it's gonna like really change anything. But 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 I also I, what 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 makes me nervous? The thing that makes me most nervous about this, right, mm -hmm. is 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 uh, uh, the uh, the the idea, right, that like the fact that SBF is going to get locked up for some astronomical amount of time is like a victory in some sense for crypto or for or for anybody like like uh, uh, who's who's been wronged by FTX or some other centralized exchange. Like it's not, this doesn't change that. This does not change any of the problems that our industry is facing systemically. Like it, it's it's not, uh, it's, it's not gonna undo any of the damage really that SBF did. So, I mean, that's, that's where I sit on it. It's like, it's an interesting issue. As you can tell, I have real problems with how federal sentencing work. So I'm gonna talk about those if we're talking about federal sentencing. But like the fact that like, it's happening to SBF, boohoo! Like I don't really care, you know. And 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 so, it's uh, uh, okay. And so and so, yeah. I think that like the, we have the headline, and I gotta I gotta run in like ten. So oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, what, about, like, the, the the Coinbase uh, uh, 
uh, uh, ruling if, uh, if 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 we can, because I think there's some interesting stuff in in that from Judge uh, Fila. Fila, I can never say your name right, so I, I apologize for 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 butchering that. But but for those who don't know, uh, yesterday the uh, uh, Southern District of New York ruled um, Coinbase's uh, motion for judgment on the pleadings uh in the lawsuit by uh the sec against against coinbase and what so 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 what the sec had sued coinbase for is for being an unregistered broker dealer and an unregistered sorry an unregistered securities broker dealer and an unregistered securities exchange and what a motion for judgment on the pleadings is is when um is coinbase basically went to the court and said much more complicated than this but at their heart what they're saying is even if you accept everything that the government that the SEC has put in their complaint as true, um, there's still not enough uh, evidence in the complaint that you could sustain a finding that we were operating as an unregistered uh, broker dealer or securities exchange. So one extremely on the whole, I think the result was like net positive, but like there's there's some like, it sort of exposed, I think, some real lurking issues for the, for the industry. So the, the net positive thing that I think we got out of this ruling is this um, idea that uh, this is on the broker dealer point. That if you simply uh, provide like price information and provide access to digital assets um, through a platform, uh, even if you charge a fee for that, for that, you're not a broker dealer. And that's huge, right? That's that's um, because oddly enough, it's it's like not even it's a big deal for Coinbase, but it's actually a much bigger deal for probably the biggest winner is the MetaMask, right? Because because if you if you have wallet software now, you can you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief that that uh, you're not you're not going to uh, be a be a broker dealer just by virtue of allowing somebody to trade something that may be a security through your platform. Also, potentially big news for anybody who's running a front end, right? So I know we've talked in here before about how front ends pose a, a, a particularly vulnerable attack vector uh, for the US government. I think that the ruling yesterday, assuming it holds up on appeal, is uh, 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 not uh, is is going to be good for anybody operating a DeFi protocol, right? Where all you're really doing, your main point of centralization, is a front end where people are accessing smart contracts. It's gotten a lot harder for the SEC to make an argument that by operating that front end, you are at least operating as a broker dealer. You know, there's commodities derivatives issues that come up there too, so it's not like we're out of the woods. So that's very good. The bad part is that. Um, you have this uh it, it's kind of walking back a lot of the um uh the the gains that we made so to speak in the ripple decision right because in the ripple decision one of one of the most important holdings in the ripple decision is the sort of secondary sales of securities were are not going to be treated as securities transactions and so we've walked that back tremendously with this with this ruling in um in the Coinbase case, where really what uh, uh, what what the court is saying is that like, look, you can't just turn a blind eye. Like, just because there's some sort of unknown intermediary between the purchase the person purchasing the tokens and the issuer of the tokens, like you have to look at all of the facts surrounding why somebody would buy these tokens, and if the reason that somebody's buying these tokens is because of promises. That are being made by the issuer, then then it kind of doesn't matter that it's technically a secondary sale um, of of the uh, of the security. So that's bad. That's uh, that that's definitely bad. That's definitely going to be a point that comes up on appeal. And frankly, I think that it kind of dooms the SEC in this case. Even though we still have to go through discovery, we still have to go through summary judgment. There's going to be a trial. If that's the rule that the court's going to apply to like whether um, uh, uh, Coinbase is a securities exchange, 
Coinbase is probably a securities exchange because we all know how Coinbase works, right? Like they list a token. Maybe that token is like, you know, being just being traded on the secondary market. But I think we all can think of instances where like there's a token listed on Coinbase and clearly the issuer of that token is like doing something to encourage people to, to, to buy those tokens. So, so I do think that uh, Coinbase is in real trouble. But this Could is- I, uh... Oh, but, go ahead, Sam. Oh yeah, go ahead, Garrett. Well, I was going to derail it to a different topic. So, sure. Uh, no, I just, I just wanted to ask. So, the the two judgments that came yesterday, one was for the wallet, the other one was for the staking services. So, the you're saying that the the ruling coming down on the staking services is the uh, issue at hand here. Sorry, no, I actually didn't address the staking services issue. I was addressing because they, I think they won on the staking services as well. No, I think the they they won the motion to dismiss on the wallet, but the staking services was denied. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, that staking services, yeah, is kind of wrapped into the point that I was I was saying about whether or not they're, they're, they're participating as as I think in that context as a as a broker dealer of a security. Yeah, well, you know, we talked about the Kraken case a long time ago. I think yeah. it's eight it's six to eight months ago now, and there's going to be clear differences between the Kraken case and the Coinbase case. Uh, first up, Coinbase has a lot of funds to go to trial. Like Kraken just essentially settled, say, hey, you know what? We don't have millions of dollars to go and spend on uh, this trial right now. We're just going to settle, wash our hands. And uh, they, I think Jesse essentially alluded at the time that it was Coinbase's role to to take a, take this up, to take up the staking issue and, and go and fight with it because they're the ones that actually have enough uh, capital and uh, political will to go out and and see this thing go to trial all the way through because you know looking how the Ripple trial went, I mean we're talking years of litigation. It could be yeah, two yeah, or three yeah. years. Yeah, I mean that's what's in front in this case for sure. We're not. Yeah. I, mean, I mean because to be clear, we have not even started discovery in, in in this case at this point. I don't think. And so yeah, in fact, I'm sure we haven't. So yeah, we're talking about years. We're not going to really know. It's it's kind of an, it, like. At the end of the day, this case is just kind of like one more data point about what the law might be. Uh, but I don't know uh, uh, how much, uh, uh, it, it, there's no finality to it. Just, I, I, I do wanna ask a question before we hop on the other topic. And, and that's like, if there's uh, substantive uh, laws that are passed by US Congress during this time period where this case is going on that essentially that essentially allows the whatever type of staking service that coinbase was operating uh to become legal what happens to the case at that point well so it depends on on how the law is is formulated right because laws can either be most of the time laws are just forward looking right so if you have a case that's brought before a law changes it kind of doesn't affect that case sometimes laws can be backwards looking and impact um, existing litigation frankly the coinbase case is such a big deal that if we did have some movement in congress i wouldn't be surprised if they actually made it so that it would resolve uh, this case in in, in 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 some way shape or form but um uh you know the the the, the default i think would be no the the coinbase is litigating this court case under the law as of the date the complaint was filed hmm. Okay, what about the topic that's on everyone's mind, which is what does this all mean for <laughs> Leviathan points? Finally, 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 we got to give the people what they want, which is points. Everybody wants points. Yeah. If I like, getting if you, to the point, if you go to bed tonight and you didn't do anything today that got you points, you fucking wasted your day. Uh, you did not submit a headline. Legal advice, people. <laughs> that is legal advice. <laughs> Finally, uh, someone qualified to say someone to, to <laughs> say something on the show. We don't get it every day, man. Um, no, no. I think that I think that the uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, look. Obviously, I'm I'm a huge Leviathan Homer. Not no surprise. Uh, and I do think that that everybody um, should should be out there uh, 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 trying to participate and get Leviathan points and uh, the system that you guys have set up. Uh, to incentivize like a, a decentralized news service is phenomenal. Like it's, uh, you know, people, I'm, I'm always surprised. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't be surprised anymore. 
but I am that like I will see Leviathan pop up just all over, right? People are like just different disparate groups are like getting their headlines from Leviathan because you know this incentive system is uh is is really does get people to like participate and, and you have like this very up-to-date and broad base of kind of happenings in, in in crypto so you know i think points are are great for that and uh and you know it's it's uh um we we get too panicked i think um about about the government and uh oh what's 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 the u.s government going to do to crypto that uh you know we get sometimes i think it's easy to uh want to stop innovating because it's like oh that's like going to be something that annoys the government possibly and so let's let's just do something else and and like i can't sit here and be like if you wanted me to sit here and come up with construct like some doomsday scenario where leviathan leviathan constitutes points leviathan points constitute securities and leviathan is a you know, issue of I, I could do that i could <laughs> Yeah. But <laughs> uh, God forbid, God forbid, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but I but you know I I think that it's it's not the right lens to uh, to, to to view the tech term. Listen, I want Sam here to argue with and agree with some stuff. Yeah, uh, I I know you got to run. I have a I actually had another thread to talk about points uh, that we can talk about at another time. It was really good and talks about the points meta uh, in a yeah. Let's do light. it. Let's do it. Uh, but I, Alex, I know you got to jump. Oh yeah, I got a few more minutes, so let's let's keep chatting about points. Okay, let me let me just bring this up because <laughs> I saw this yesterday, and uh, I just wanted to run through it. This is uh, this yeah. is a thread from uh, Lucas Schizofreak, who uh, I'll just read through some of this. So uh, we're an unserious industry, right? But everything's changed now. We've really grown up. It started when a prodigy inventor, Pac-Man, creator of the points meta. So the points meta is this thing that, you know, there was an airdrop in crypto. It's where a protocol bribes early users with the implied promise of money awarded in unknown quantities based on unknown rules. Uh, the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's completely banned in literally any other industry due to being a violation of SEC regs. Uh, the old airdrop system was highly inefficient. It's extremely illegal to tell people what behaviors qualify them for airdrops. So nobody really knew what their going to do. They just kind of click around, right? And then hope to, that they get free money one day. But then Pac-Man comes along and uh, puts out points, right? Where people get points for doing certain activities. And the more points that you get, the more airdrop that you get. More airdrop, more points. Uh, so wait, it's illegal to tell people what activities qualify for them for airdrops, but it's not illegal to give them a quantity of points that also tells them the exact same thing, but in a video game way? <laughs> <laughs> You uh, can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Apparently so. Either that or the regulators just haven't learned about it yet. And when they do, all founders relying on the genius and revolutionary points meta are going back to jail. Back to jail, as they've already been. Yes, the reason we all work in crypto is that felonies carry a seven-year employment strike in the U.S., which prevents us from attaining traditional employment. Anyway, after he invented the points meta, he launched Blast, right? And uh, nobody really knows where, what, what Blast is from a technical standpoint. Neither did Pac-Man. So step one of his innovation process was asking people if they would send him money to do research, and he raised $1.6 billion. Uh, after three months of research and invention were complete, Pac-Man emerged from his laboratory with a Blast L2. Unfortunately, due to many sleepless nights inventing, he forgot to move everyone's money on the Blast, and so everyone had to pay $300 in ETH fees to, to get their points. Uh, millions of dollars of ETH were burned, making it the number one most Ethereum aligned L2 in existence. Ethereum aligned, what? That's another industry term I'm unfamiliar with. As far as I can tell, when something is Ethereum aligned, it means very expensive and hard to use. People always say it's a compliment though, so I'm sure I'm missing something. At this point, everyone is on blast. The first L2 with native yield, me, all my friends, and the North Koreans. Nobody really expected the Koreans, but somehow they snuck in and hacked about 60 million out of the Munchables treasury, and they're gonna use it to fund the North Korean military or something. Uh, and that puts Pac-Man in a pickle. So either he can roll back uh, the Blast L2 and uh, and and take the money back from the North Koreans that exploited the protocol, or he can do nothing, right? Uh, he actually went back. I think they negotiated. They got all the money back, and they're returning the $97 million back to everyone who put money into Munchables. So this is a win there. 
<laughs> but uh, I did want to talk about this if you have a few minutes, uh, Alex. Is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to, and I, and I do have some thoughts on it. I mean, like, look, I think that the um, I, I actually kind of disagree with with the um, the underlying thesis um, of, of 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 that post. Although I like Lucas's post post generally, right? But the um, the 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 SEC is not stupid, right? Let's 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 just get rid of that, right? And 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 the 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 reason that's important is like if you're issuing tokens, right? If and and issuing those tokens constitutes a securities issuance, right? Um, it doesn't help you to just call the tokens points, right? It doesn't matter what you call the thing, right? The point is. What you do is you promise the, uh, uh, the the user, investor, whatever you're going to get future value if you if, if if you rely on my efforts, right? That's 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 what the, the thrust of the of, of the securities issues are, securities laws issues are, and and uh, what what I think is is that the uh, you know I, I do agree with part of what Lucas is saying, right? That like or maybe he's actually disagreeing with this, but the idea that um, points are useful to track user engagement with a, with a protocol in a way that's meaningful before a token is launched and can therefore sort of be as a stand-in to tokens. I actually think that's pretty valuable, right? Because I, I, I do think that just from a practical standpoint, a lot of protocols are in a rush to issue a token because they've been rumors about an airdrop, da 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 da. They're trying to get people to use the, the protocol, and they want to rush a token out so that so that people don't get pissed off and start flooding the project, right? Um, and so, I do think that, and what that causes, right, is shitty tokens. Tokens that have shitty tokenomics, V2 tokens, like it can be really bad for a protocol. You have to roll a token back. You have to roll da da da. But the um, so so I think that tokens are useful in that context. But what they're not useful for, it, it, if your issuance of a token, right, for user engagement, is going to create a securities problem, your issuance of points for that same user engagement creates the same securities problem. You're not solving that issue. And, and anybody who's out there thinking that, uh, uh, well, oh, if we just use point, if we just call them points instead of tokens, it's not a securities issue because to points aren't on the SEC's radar. It's dumb. It's just dumb. And, and, and it's not, it's not the way the law works. It's not the way the SEC works. Um, and, and but that being said, I I, I don't want to like shit on the whole like to, uh, points meta, right? Because I, I I do think that there's like a legitimate reason to have like a centralized system of of, of points. And um, but as soon as you start talking about like I hear all this crazy shit, right? Like like and I don't want to point fingers at protocols, but like oh we're gonna have like tradable points, we're gonna have like a points marketplace. <laughs> gonna, you know what are you guys talking about? They just call it a token at that point. Like, like, you, like you're just you're just talking about you're just talking about securities, but you're 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 putting them in an SQL database instead of on chain. Yeah. Well, what's the point? Yeah. Shout out Wales Market. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch on in that thread was uh, the stealing of money by the North Koreans. Uh, Taylor McRae said, uh, is it a, is hiring for North Korean hackers a sanctionable offense? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but uh, really the question that we debated on crypto Twitter for about five minutes before the funds were returned was uh, should blast roll back, right? Should they just let these hackers go away and, and, or should they roll back a centralized chain that they fully control and can roll back? In order to prevent this money to be uh, taken by these North Koreans, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I, I come in with a hot take, and then, I, and then I got a jumpsuit. But, but I, do, I do, I do have a very strong opinion about this. Should Blast roll back the chain is the wrong question. The correct question is, does Blast have to roll back the chain? 
Hmm. Interesting. And, 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 and this is where centralization is a huge problem, right? Because let, let's play out an alternate scenario, right? Where it really was the North Koreans and that 60, 62.5 million is gone, just gone. And I'm somebody, I put up say 100K or a or, uh, million dollars, like enough money that I'm not just gonna like fuck off, right? And take the L on, 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 on losing that money. I'm not going to go sue North Korea, right? How am I going to sue North Korea? How am I going to sue the hacker? But I know who Blast is, right? I know who runs Blast. I'm going to sue Blast. And I'm going to say when I sue Blast, hey, you guys could have rolled the chain back and you didn't. And therefore, you cooperated in wow. whoever it was stealing my million dollars. Wow. To the North Koreans, which is... Not what anybody wants. No, I mean, I mean, look, just forget about the North Koreans. Like the North Korea is just a boogeyman. I mean, like don't forget about the North Koreans. But like, yeah. it, like it, it, it's kind of besides the point when you talk about like what what happens with like a chain rollback that's a centralized chain. Like, here's the thing, right? Like, and, and this I think gets to like the really critical issue. I'm channeling somebody on Twitter, and I forget who I'm dealing with. Them, so I apologize. But like, if if you took what's happening on chain right now, right? Everything that happens on Ethereum and you took away Ethereum, right? And you just made that a massive supercomputer that everybody could just like trade assets on and log into, or you could do it anonymously. You could, you know, there's, but like, it's my computer or somebody's computer and they can hit a stop button. Like everything that's going on in crypto is like blatantly fucking illegal. And whoever's responsible for running that computer is going to fucking jail. Okay. And so like, so like if, your L2 is a computer, right? It's just like you're running your L2. You got you got your sequencer that you can hit the stop button on. Like, stop fucking deluding yourself. You're responsible under the US laws for everything that's going on on that L2. I uh, just want to bring up this tweet before you go. Uh, Eric Wall says that uh, this may be a good time to remind you that there's no difference between base and blast. Whoa. Both at stage one or stage zero, which is full training wheels. So proof system is still under development. Withdrawals can be censored and upgrades can be executed by actors with a more centralized control than a security council. Yep. Yeah, yeah I don't disagree with that. I don't Actually, it's kind of that. obvious, no? It's yeah. kind of obvious, no? Yeah. I mean, like, I'm like, we gotta take our fucking blinders off. So I'm cursing yeah. so much today. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like we have to take our blinders off about about like L2s and like what a centralized L2 actually means. Yeah, so, so. the Coinbase chain, to be honest, no base, Fed chain, Fed chain. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got good competition for that. That's the regulation over there. You know what I mean? That, that this is a regulated chain for sure. Oh yeah, AYC. Um, <laughs> well, Alex, we've taken up way too much of your time. I know you got to run. Uh, yeah, it's been fun, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on. Uh, Thanks there... for coming, man. Man, really enjoyed it. Should come yeah, off. Yeah. Plus twenty five hundred points for. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't waste my day. Give him a few more, okay? Again, give him a few more. Come on. Well, they don't grow on trees, though. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, can we maybe uh, like uh, Alex? Even if you have to uh, like uh, drop off, uh, like guys, maybe we can even uh, in a minute or two like explain the audience uh, like what they should do with the the whole point uh, thing in like a more uh, I don't know to, in a more in, in maybe like the clearest way we can. All right, guys, I'm gonna hop. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. -bye. Yeah, thanks, Bye -bye. Alex. Have a good one. Uh, so just for, to run through to get back to SBF. Uh, there are still comments going on. SBF actually made some comments that we can uh, go take a look wow. at. Yeah, he got up and spoke. So uh, let's see what he has to say. Um, I'm going to pull this back up. So we ask you, do you want to speak, Mr. Sam Bagman fried He stands up and he says, I appreciate what Mark said about me. Um, and I don't really know what is going to happen with my emotional life or hypothetical future kids. Uh, there are customers who I agree with. Uh, they've gone through a lot and obviously money they didn't think they'd use or have, and they were deprived of the gains. 
They've been waiting for a full year and a half. What matters are my colleagues at FTX. I threw away what they had built. They were let down. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry about what happened at every stage. This I should have done and said things I shouldn't have. Care about everything too. Um, talks about his colleagues more. They follow me across the earth, across continents, working past 2 a.m. Uh, so many of them. And uh, let's keep going down a little bit. It doesn't. It, it doesn't seem like he understands. You know. Yeah, there's not remorse here, right? In yeah, like, he only cares about what happens with his own team, and like he doesn't really express uh, any like anything towards all the people that lost their money. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not seeing it like at least briefly when we're uh, like we're scrolling. So like, look here. Like I made I made a series of bad decisions. They weren't selfish de decisions. That's not true. Like you, come on, you use customers. <laughs> yeah, come on. they were selfish for his group. You know, you know what I mean. Like on his view, maybe it wasn't just for him, but it was for him and his uh, crew. So th th that's as selfish as it gets, pretty much. S still repeating, Alameda wasn't bankrupt. I mean, like, come on, Sam. At this point, Alameda wasn't bankrupt. FTX wasn't. Alameda's gains were lost. It was more leverage than it should have been. That that sounds like leverage losses right there. We had to liquidate to meet the run on FTX, then shutting it down. FTX yeah. would have survived. No, that's not the case. You had a massive run. Like there was no money left in the exchange. Uh, this is this is not a remorseful person. Yeah, this is denial in a way. This is saying like I I like I did these things. I was doing the right thing, and yeah. if, if only if only we had had that eight billion dollar hold that we'd used all these customer funds for. If only you'd given me more time and the, time, and the market would have gone up and I would have earned all this money again and then give it, you know? Exactly, yeah. That's, that's like this alone, like there's no remorse here. Uh, this is just, I made business decisions and it wasn't selfish <laughs> that he says, but uh, <laughs> uh, he's like, there are enough assets. It's not because of a rise in the price of crypto uh, that hasn't hurt. No, they, they were missing. There was an $8 billion hole on their balance sheet. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's Sam's delusional and he still is delusional. Um, and you know, the fact that he can't see that, that he put himself in this position and that using customer funds to like fund a, a, an investment in an Anthropic or like all of these things that he gambled on with customer funds, it's, it's really absurd at this point. And maybe he needs, you know, life in prison to be able to figure this out. And in 30 to 40 years, they'll actually come around and, and see that, that what he actually did was malicious and his fault directly and uh you know there's no remorse fear nah that yeah. doesn't seem that it's gonna matter uh, for him either way yeah uh he goes on to say my useful life is probably over well that's not true you can you know find yourself find god in prison repent and uh actually have real remorse for people um you know uh Let's see. Let's keep going through here because this is just a lot of bullshit. Customers have been suffering. Uh, it looks like customers will finally get paid the current value of assets. It's true for lenders and investors as well, too. Um, is this and, true? Well, this is what he was saying in court. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, remember, they sold everything at the bottom, but then they still had all these assets. The price of Anthropic went up. They just sold that for a billion dollars. So I think they'll pay everybody in full at the, at the prices the, of everything was at the bottom. Uh, but you know, it's it's not getting back the the incredible run that we've had since then. So you know, yeah. it's just it's just cash. Um, yeah. And you know, uh, then what, uh, did did you see earlier that he said something like uh, on one of the previous on the earlier uh, tweets? Uh, it was like uh, something like funds that they didn't think they'd have. The, the, did you see that? Well, here's here's a really important point that the prosecutors are saying, right? If Ma if Mr. Bankman Fried thought mathematics mathematics justified what he did, he'd do it again, and that's that was clear in his statement that he made before: no acceptance of responsibility, no remorse, and a a willful offender in this. And he's not swearing off doing again. Uh, he said there's an opportunity to relaunch FTX or an equi equivalent, um, and he tells that's exactly what would happen. And you know, prosecutors pushing for forty years, at least, so he will not do it again. Uh, like, 
he's just it seems like he's kind of disconnected from uh, like the, the the situation in a way yeah exactly i mean it's you know i think that he probably believed i mean this is what he always believed and this was clear in everything that he said like during and after is that like i can just make it work right and that's not the yeah. case. i think by the way i think he still thinks the math is right he will he, he didn't have enough time to like finish the equation or whatever, whatever you know? exactly yeah so uh i'm just going to refresh this um so he goes on to say, the defendant is not a monster, but he committed gravely serious crimes that harmed many people, and he would consider doing it again. So 40 to 50 years. Thank you. <laughs> he would consider doing it again. I mean, so, he said it. I mean, he yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the disconnection that I'm uh, referring to. Is like, uh, he completely doesn't seem to realize that... Uh, that it had a lot of consequences. It, it just it, it had so many consequences that it's it just seems to not really recognize and willing to. Maybe he thinks that if he recognizes them, then he actually pleads guilty and he doesn't want, uh, like in, in front of himself. Even I mean, you know, like he doesn't want to believe it uh, towards himself, so he just blocks it. Yeah, but, you know, from his mindset, I mean, he's always talked about it. Is that you know he just chooses whatever the most rational decision is, and in his mind. It was Stealing customer funds, using them for his own benefit, <laughs> uh, making huge leverage bets that didn't go his ways, um, and uh, yeah, and Garrett, what, uh, go ahead, Garrett. Garrett, what about some of your thoughts on it? I'm curious. Uh, honestly, I haven't thought too much about it. Like, I sort of agree with um, Alex's uh, rough summary earlier, which is like the, there may be problems with the process that I disagree with, but like I. I'm not very happy about Mr. Sam McMahon Fried and think he deserves to have some time to think about what he did. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of time to think about what he wow. did. Wow, a lot of time. <laughs> you know, I, 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 we're probably going to get a decision from Judge Kaplan in the next minute or two. I mean, we're just waiting for uh, Interesting Chris to, to continue to live tweet this out. Um, but there's no remorse here. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing to take away from this is that, you know, we let's go back up to that uh, thing that Sam said. Um, uh, where is it? It was here, right? So, um, you know, he thinks that, that he would have paid people pay people back right and that he could have run ftx alameda wasn't bankrupt ftx wasn't bankrupt coming from the words of his own mouth you know it's just willful denial of the situation that he was in can you keep going up a bit yeah sure um you know and he's like talking more about his like team and like what he built rather than the people that lost money here um i think for him like the, the yeah, uh, look at this one look at this one uh, that, that in the middle now like uh the post of the students uh, about obviously money they didn't think they'd use. Uh, the, yeah. what, is it, what is it money they didn't think they'd use? Like, who says that, you know? Yeah, I mean, in his mind, it was like, you know, he, he kind of thought that he could use the funds better. And he did. I mean, he he, he really thought. Yeah, but it's like, like, you know what it reminds me of? Uh, like, uh, really, like years ago when I really didn't know or cared uh, anything about finance, there was this movie about the 2008 uh, collapse. I'm not sure uh, what's it called with like, with like Brad Pitt and uh, some other like uh, famous actors. Okay. Uh, and uh, I lost my time. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think the judge is probably going to see this. I mean, like when we, we talked about with this with Alex before, but, you know, he's ar the judge has already said that he's reached the maximum uh, like points limit for, for federal sentencing guidelines. And that's 110 years at this right now. Um, you know, it's it's just incredible what is being played out here. Um, you know, the perpetrator of all this has no has no remorse, didn't believe that he was bankrupt, didn't believe that he'd spent all these customer funds in, in a wrong way. And, and okay. believe that if he had just had a bit more time, then he would have been able to, to pay everybody back. I remember what I uh, was trying to to say. You remember that uh, on that movie, there's uh, like uh, the, the actor playing My Michael Berry, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. And he, he runs this uh, company called Scion Capital or uh, something like that. And 
all the investors, they're, they're telling him like, give us our money, give us our money, like they're trying to withdraw their money, but, he's, he, but he like holds the funds and uh, he controls the hedge fund and no one gets their money. And uh, after like uh, a while, everyone makes a lot of money because he didn't allow them to uh, sell. And then uh, they uh, like actually, you know, bet, bet against the market and made a fortune. But it's like SBF is thinking that he decides whether the money of, on the exchange <laughs> can stay on the exchange. Or, uh, like, uh, and he doesn't like think of the fact that on this case, like if people want their money, like uh, they, they should be able to like withdraw it any second it's like that's the whole point of running an exchange and not uh, like uh, just taking people's money and telling them well i'll, I'll just decide to, to do whatever and i will uh, come back to you in a few in a few years yeah so now the judge is saying that he's exceptionally ambitious aware of his talents which he is and he was and he continues yeah. to state that right yeah um uh, caroline also testified that he was really ambitious he talked about building two huge companies with alameda and ftx and was very interested in politics and wanted to use his money to have an influence on politics. Incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it's, it, I, I think the judges sees through the whole thing here. There's no remorse. And, you know, he's, he's exceptionally aware of, of what he was doing. Right. Um, oh, this next thing that the judge says is, let me just refresh here. Uh, <laughs> judge says he said there was a 5% chance he'd be president one day. Uh, what? Indeed, what? <laughs> yeah. what? It's real, is this like uh, for sure real content? No, this is coming. This, this is yeah, this is real. Apparently, SBF said there was a five percent chance. Uh, man, listen, he's disconnected. You know, he's out of it. He's like out of it. Really? Yeah. He, uh, he, he can't uh, like, and you know what? Like, uh, who can even imagine how he is feeling? You know, like who can even imagine being in that situation, uh, regardless of the of the fact that he's guilty and he's brought it upon himself. You know, but it's like uh, still facing like uh, uh, an unbelievably like uh, horrendous uh, situation that is in front. Yeah. Also, the judge just made a, a bell curve meme reference, uh, <laughs> saying that he wanted to be a hugely political, influential person in his country. It wasn't just the left end of his of the spectrum. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks, Judge, for throwing out the the bell curve. He's he's getting the book thrown at him, right? I, I'm I'm pretty sure here. Like the judge. By, uh, by the way, is this a common thing like uh, in the U.S. that uh, trials are like covered like that, or, or just because it's like such a huge uh, thing? Well, typically, I mean, it depends. We've talked to Alex about this before, but uh, in federal court, there is no uh, cameras and there's there's no audio recordings of anything. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the but, same here. But. Yeah, but in 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 like when you go down to the states, depending on the state, they they do allow videos in for for trials. So unfortunately, this is in federal court. It would be nice to have a view of what Sam is looking like right now, and uh, I, I wish we had the video. Um, Kaplan, Judge Kaplan continues on to say he set up a vehicle to make donations to the right uh, through straws that wouldn't come back to him. Some of this at one point might have been attributed to him having presented himself as in favor of appropriate regulation of the crypto industry. Um, you know, he he donated to pretty much everybody at the time. And uh ooh, man, I I'm getting flashbacks of two years ago. Were you affected? Can I ask? I don't know. Maybe it's not appropriate. So, uh, oh, not with FTX. Like, ignore my question if it's inappropriate. I mean, just the general market sell-off uh, at the time was yeah, for sure. Big, that, right? Yeah, that, that's for sure. I mean, I, I meant uh, like directly. I don't know. Like, I, I know that people lost like huge amounts of funds. Like, yeah, you said eight billion, no? Eight billion dollars. Yeah. And, and how much did you say? Because you said that some of the money will be paid back, but, but like how much money is actually going to be paid back? Uh, all of it. No, but but like the whole eight billion. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but wasn't it worth? But uh, it was worth like more than eight billion. Uh, if so, no, because yeah, I I mean at the some of the investments that he made have done really well. They invested in Anthropic at like two million, two hundred million dollars. They sold it for a billion recently. They've also been going back and recouping funds. And but doesn't this uh, doesn't this uh, strengthen his point? By the way, no, no, because with bankruptcy, it's 
uh, it's determined at the the time of the filing of the bankruptcy, what the the dollar cost is. Like, just because they, they, they said this earlier in the case that just because the crypto value goes up doesn't uh, change anything. Like, you know, they, they made some investments, they went up, it, it, it's still, uh, they'll liquidate that and they'll pay back whatever the dollar value is. Okay. Yeah. Not much about that. Yeah, I know. Uh, so everybody got forcibly liquidated at the bottom and it's going to have to wait a long time to get their funds back. Um, it, it's I, like a matter of years now? Hopefully soon. I think there's going to be like an initial payout here in uh, 2024 for people that probably recoups 90% of the dollar value of, of what they had on FTX at the time. Um, and uh, then the, it'll go on for another 10 years after that. Yeah. Uh, so Judge Kaplan says that uh, when he was interviewed by a reporter that he knew well, uh, he said, you said a lot of stuff about good regulations. Was that just PR2? And he said, yeah, fuck the regulators. <laughs> so he was a snake. He would do anything to to get like his business and, and what he wanted to, into a better position. And that, you know, if it meant spending customer deposits on uh, political donations, you know, judge goes on to say it was power, influence. Caroline Ellison was asked, how did the defendant describe his approach to risk? Answer, he said he was risk neutral. He was comfortable as long as he was positive EV, um, which, I mean, kind of explains the, everything that we're in right now. So as long as as long as he thought that he could flip a coin enough times and it would come out good at the end, he would do anything. It's like neutral evil for Sam, like willing to do anything, but really doesn't really care about morals when it comes to it, just as long as it, it has a good outcome in the end. Uh, it's, it's like someone playing a computer game. You know what I mean? When he's kind of disconnected from the actual environment that he's affecting. Yeah. Uh, some nice comments on this one. Uh, risk neutral, famous last words in this case. <laughs> you playing, Sam? Can you explain? Oh, I mean, like, just that, just that he would do anything as long as he thought that in the long term it would it would come out on top. Right. I mean, that's that's the, that's the gambler's mindset right there. Like as long as oh, you think he, he he's like the ultimate gambler in a way, I think. Yeah. He gambled exactly. everything for everyone, like, you know, and and eventually he lost not just money. Like, think about it. He pretty much lost everything. Yeah. It's, it's so tragic, to be honest. I think the story is tragic. Uh, man. I like this is running. I'm in New York right now. This is running just over in Manhattan at the moment. Um, ah, yeah. How close is it? Like a few minutes? On the train, it's about 45 minutes to get down there. Ah, okay. Yeah, on the met on the subway. But uh, the, when you say New York, it's like the city or the state. You mean? I mean, they're in downtown. They're 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 in like Lower Manhattan at the moment. Mm. At the federal court. Um, I, I I'm. Fully, I think pretty much is assumed that Sam's going to jail for at least 40 years here. Prosecutors recommend 40 years. The judge might throw on some extra time as well, too. But Sam's probably looking at uh, at, at a very long time in prison. Um, so Judge Kaplan continues. Inner City Press says, a man willing to flip a coin as to the continued existence of life on Earth. SBF knew that Alameda was spending customer funds on risk investments, political contributions, and Bahamas real estate. The funds were not his to use. Yeah. Um, those swanky offices were pretty nice, though. <laughs> those what? Oh, uh, the offices that FTX had. I mean, they, they essentially built their own compound out in uh, on the Bahamas. Do you remember those? Yeah, I uh, like were they all uh, like uh, sleeping in like sleeping bags and whatever uh, like these photos? No, or, they had or this from before. No, check this out. They had this like massive building that they bought <laughs> in, in one of the nicest properties on the Bahamas. Oh, what is this? Look at this. Come yeah, uh, where <laughs> they had this like thirty-five million dollar penthouse for Look that that, that he lived, and then 
look at this like can you zoom in like is it coming out of the water or what like uh i mean what yeah i mean this is what he was spending customer funds on okay yeah well i'm sure some illicit activities uh, were uh, probably conducted over there the polycule uh, maybe illicit is not the word maybe i'm confusing but uh, I, I don't know to be, to be honest i wouldn't want to be there I'll tell you the truth. I think it was very like uh, shady over there. Hmm. You know, it's interesting how we get a uh, like judgment here in the FTX case so clearly. Uh, but looking back at 2008, when we had the entire meltdown of the banking system, there was nothing like this. We we never took any any of uh, those people who caused that and over leveraged the banks. And put them on trial and sent them away to prison for for 40 years you mean what 2008 yeah back in 2008 no only made of, but but isn't it kind of similar sam that uh, again one guy made off and here again one guy's sbf isn't it yeah. like uh yeah but made off made off wasn't responsible made, made off ran a clear ponzi made off wasn't responsible for causing the the banking crisis in 2008 I mean, that was that was more product of of pretty much every single bank in the entire world being over leveraged uh, in some way and having this systemic risk that was caused by one asset uh, to to essentially blow up the global economy at the time, um, from which we've not really recovered since. Um, nobody went to prison. Like you know, you didn't see Jamie Dimon being hauled in front of Congress and all the other bankers, uh, you know, telling them that you know. This is it's essentially like state state sanctioned um, fraud, right? And because of it, they had regulatory backing, um, and they had the blessing of the the regulators at the time. They went to jail, which was unfortunate. Uh, but if you run a private company that doesn't have the the regulators back, then uh, you know this is where you end up. So one of his pithier expressions, I think, was I fucked up. Judge Kaplan said, Mr. Bankman Freed has the right to plead not guilty and go to trial. Everybody's got that right, and I don't hold it against him. But I come back to Mrs. Ellison's testimony. He knew it was wrong. Can you put it on the screen, Sam? Oh, yeah. This tab. There we go. Um, so even Caroline was saying it was wrong. Caroline flipped like the day after, and I think her trial uh her sentencing will probably come after sam's at some point uh, if sam's going to get 40 to 50 then i don't know i i think caroline gets 7 to 15. but you and but in your mind for example you think that is that something you're good with like uh, good like i mean like uh, is it uh fair in your opinion or how do you see you know in a landmark case like this they have to make a statement of of going after the head uh pretty much you know, when you when when they all flipped, they're essentially going to they, they all pled guilty. So like Nishan and Caroline, everyone essentially pled yeah. guilty within a day or two. Uh, they they testified against Sam. Uh, they helped get this this massive judgment against him. And in cooperation for their cooperation for working with the government, uh, they'll get lesser sentences. Um, yeah, but I mean, do, do you think that uh, these sentences that you've uh, described? Do you think that uh, in your mind, especially as an American citizen, like you say, it's actually happening in your country, not like for me that it's happening uh, on the other side of the world. And uh, like, do you think that, uh, like, shouldn't uh, the others uh, in your mind be uh, punished like in a more severe way or like? Uh, no, because Sam was the leader, right? He was the one, he was the face of everything and he was the brains behind everything and you know his lieutenants obviously will see prison time and fines and uh you know will probably never be able to work in the industry again but do, do, do you think they made like uh, fortunes out of it and like kept them at places like for some of these people maybe they walk out in like seven or 15 uh, years and they are like rich in an incredible way do you think? no i don't think so no, the, the government will go back and essentially like claim all their assets back because I mean, they paid themselves, right? And they took money from FTX to to enrich themselves. So they'll have to give all that money back. That'll go back to, to creditors. 
uh, they'll have to sell all the assets that they have that they uh, received from FTX, um, which means that that entire venture for them will will essentially uh, like hopefully bankrupt them, um, and they'll have to start over again. Plus, you know, the reputational damage alone to to themselves as being a part of the biggest fraud in the entirety of global history um, is 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 not going to be something that is just gets off your gets off your back with the passage of 10 years right like any any time like caroline will never be a public figure again same as everybody else that was high up in ftx that that knew what was going on as well uh so judge kaplan goes on to say uh in her next statement that uh he's not going to admit a thing as he is right specific deterrence Sam's name is mud around the world, but he's persistent and he's a great marketing guy. And the prosecutor, Mr. Roos, is right that the outlines of Sam Bakeman's free revised versions are clear. Um, so he's, she's essentially agreeing with the prosecutors here and, and saying that, uh, you know, everything the prosecutor said about him being non remorseful, essentially being just willing to do anything as long as it has positive EV. Uh, the judges, the judges agreeing with. So again, like this doesn't really bode well for him. Um, you know, he came into this defense essentially saying that he did nothing wrong and that uh, FTX wasn't bankrupt. Alameda wasn't bankrupt. And I think the judge vehemently disagrees here. Um, yeah. Well, Tess says 40 years seems too long. I don't know. Like, wait, like, if if you had to sentence this guy that caused eight billion dollars worth, it's not just it's not just that like he caused eight billion dollars worth of of you know people committed suicide after this because of the loss of funds. Um, that that there was you know significant damages that took place here, um, which you know Sam needs to pay for. Uh oh, we have Twitter going down as well too. Uh, is Twitter working for you? I may have refreshed too many times here. Uh, trying to update this. Uh oh. DeFi Advisor, is this working for you? Oh, I fully lost the internet. Sam, can you hear me? I lost you for a second. Um, I, okay. I, I disconnected my, we went offline for a second. Uh, okay, I think, I think I was also trying to talk and I was muted, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, what was the account though that you were uh, following? And showing so it's in, Inner City Press. Inner City Press. It's, 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 his it's, name it's, is uh, Matthew Russell. Um, and let me see if I can find this again. All right, let's let's bring this back up. I have to go home and. Uh, okay, I have it now as well. Just to go to the final, uh, to the last one, to the last tweet. No, I got it here. Oh, okay. Uh, so Judge Kaplan says the same the the same skills that had him even after arrest pitching his story to a huge number of media people, he had every right, and we discussed that on general deterrence at the end of the day the criminal justice system thrives only if it's seen fair um, yeah and by the way uh, to to support your point from earlier it should be seen fair to the civilians of the country where it happens that's for sure yeah um so but, but you know what the case is i think uh, that makes it uh, in a way maybe a bit different with the us because the us uh, is uh, like a place that really affects the whole world so it attracts so much more interest and uh, uh, and that stuff you know yeah so we had another there's another tweet here that says people need to feel fair uh, people need to feel it's fair or we're back in trial by combat or some or trial by combat so punishment must be fit for the seriousness of the crime. 
and this was a serious crimes. Yeah, it seems like she's really going to sentence him for a lot for a long time, huh? Yeah. Hey, is it just like one judge? Uh, because I know that uh, in the US there's like a jury and that, right? But after that, like the judge decides like the sentence himself, their, uh, their self. I I think it went to a jury trial, uh, but he. Um, oh, here we go. So uh, the defendant will rise for the imposition of the sentence. Wow, man. He stands up. Uh, Judge Kaplan, I know the probation department recommends 105 years and the government 40 to 50. That would be more than necessary. Uh oh, is she going down? Yeah, it seems like it. No, it means uh -oh. that, that uh, it's going to be less. Is it going to be less? If she said that sentence, like uh, the way I read English, that sentence means that the next one is going to be, uh, I don't know. We are betting people, and I, but I don't want to bet on this kind of stuff. Like it's not for me. I don't, it's not appropriate. But I think this sentence means that uh, it's not going to be for forty to fifty years because it would not be necessary. And she is the judge. In wow. her, I mean, I'm saying that she she thinks that. I personally, again, uh, I, I have no idea. Like uh, this is all. Like thirty years is not exactly <laughs> a short time, you know. Man. I, I'm I'm very surprised at the judge here. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm like, it's it's essentially he's the, the scale and the damage that he's done according to federal guidelines should be life in prison, and uh, forty to fifty years means that Sam's like twenty something now. He would get out when he's seventy. Um, but and, she said that it's not going to be forty to fifty years according to this tweet. I think. Yeah, so, so it goes on to say in the next uh, statement that uh, I'm not diminishing the harm, the brazenness of his actions, his exceptional flexibility with the truth, his apparent lack of any remorse. I want to further add one further thought. I do not think it a fruitful use of time to spell out every lie. Man. Yeah, it seems like she really is uh, laying the ground uh, to uh to a softer sentence, softer again. This is uh, such an incredible sentence, like uh, horrendous sentence. I mean, so when not lying, he was evasive, hair splitting, trying to get the prosecutors to rephrase questions for them. I've been doing this job for close to thirty years. I've never seen a performance like that. Man, she goes back and forth all the time. This is very drama filled. <laughs> is it? Is it? You know, this is so like, uh, in a way, uh, like, uh, it's like TV. It's like American TV for me. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm very surprised. I mean, sometimes in, in each, in each kind of statement that she makes, uh, it really seems that, you know, this is the, the worst, like the piece of, of, of damage that's ever been inflicted. But then again, she says, I, I you know, like, let's go back up to that tweet to before right she says that would be more than necessary for than 40 to 50 years like more than necessary um wow did did you see the comments about the poly market and the bets on it <laughs> where what, what are the bets on poly market right now no uh, the, the, look at the comments there's someone called the test and he shared the uh, do you see the comments over there from youtube yeah let me pull this up so uh, test is giving us some poly market predictions, uh, twenty to thirty years as as eighty percent here. Oh my god, this is like uh, uh, so many so many things that are weird and surreal. This is uh, probably our weirdest stream ever, Sam. You know. Well, here's the here's the breakdown, right? So, uh, ninety five percent chance for twenty to thirty years. <laughs> I don't 50, believe it. <laughs> 50% chance for 10 to 20 years and 20% uh, chance for, for 5 to 10, 60% chance for 30 to 40 years. That's where we're at right now. Um, Man, uh, this is so where, where would you take? This, I, I, I can't answer it, honestly. I, I, I feel like uh, I feel something is not right with answering uh, this question. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's not like uh, with tokens or whatever and all that. <laughs> like, e even if he's like, uh, the, like th that's a that's a man's life, and this is something that again, this is a. Cr I'm not saying this is a crime, like uh, co completely a crime. Oh, here we go. But, uh, we, got, we, got, we got it. 
So, oh yeah. This is uh, a man's life on the line, man. It's a man's life. Uh, it is the judgment of the court that you were sentenced to 240 months, then consecutive 60 for a total of 300 months, 25 years. Wow. You know what? That's actually less than what I uh, thought. Uh, can, you, can, can you show it on screen again, uh, Sam, like the, the tweet? Can yeah, you show it? Go. Well, there we wow. go. 25 years. That, that's less. But by the way, is there like uh, all that uh, a third for good behavior and, and that stuff? I think that Alex said that 10% could come off that. So he could get out after 23 and a half years or wow. 22 and a half years. Uh, again, also, this is like imagine 22 and a half years. Like, this is so, uh, but I, I was uh, pretty convinced, especially after uh, our talks. I was pretty convinced that he's going to get a much uh, harsher uh, sentence. Yeah, me too. What are your thoughts on it, man? How do you process it or take it? Uh, it I, I don't know. <laughs> it feels light. <laughs> feels what? It feels very light. I was I was just expecting 30 to 40 yeah. for the damage that he caused. And and lying on the stand, perjuring himself three times according to the judge. Wow. And expressing no remorse, by the way, like you've mentioned earlier. Exactly. Yeah. We, like we've expressed. So <laughs> I'm gonna refresh this because there's a great comment here. Uh Edward Snowden uh said, Holy shit, he gave him less than Chelsea Manning, 35 years for a way worse crime. <laughs> okay. Can you uh, can you explain about Chelsea Manning for uh, me and for maybe a, a few viewers who don't know? Yeah, so Chelsea Manning was a um, a government worker who uh, stole classified material and uh, was caught, um, and she was charged under the Espionage Act. Uh, after she was the one who gave uh, information to WikiLeaks. Uh, of over 750,000 classified and to, unclassified. To Julian Assange? To yeah, Julian Assange. Yeah. Julian Assange. She was imprisoned for seven years, and then her sentence was commuted by Barack Obama. Commuted, it means that she was released? Yeah, he essentially pardoned her, uh, said that, you know, you can get out of jail now. <laughs> Man. The, you know, the, I, I'm surprised as well. Just, I thought uh, the sentence is going to be harsher. Yeah. I thought so as well too. Um, I, I don't think it's long enough. But do you, anyway. so so do you think that he will probably like uh, not uh, dispute? How do they, how do they say? Uh, there will be appeals. I mean, like at this point, the you know he's been charged. The, the the appeals process could take years and years and years. You know, probably decades worth of appeals for Sam coming, uh, but. You but know, but what do you, but what do you mean? Like uh, for now, he's like uh, still uh, free to do whatever. No, like, no, he's going to be in prison. He'll spend his entire time in prison there. But he can appeal the he can appeal a lot. Ah, while he's while while he's in prison, you mean? Yes, he while he's in prison, prison. yeah. Wow. But uh, like, uh, will he like, like if he appeals, can't he all of a sudden get like forty years instead of twenty five? No, no. Oh. The the judgment's the judgment. That's fixed. He would appeal to try to get time off, um, but he probably won't be able to based on the severity of the crimes and then also everything that took place in trial as well, too. Wow, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm in a little bit in shock about this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel I feel so. I feel that way because I really think that you were, uh, to be honest, uh, I think that you were even surprised when she said that it that it's not going to be forty to fifty, not not even uh, thirty to forty. Like when it was uh, when she said it's not going to be forty to fifty, you were already you know what she's uh, she's changing the direction there. Yeah. So SPF, how old is SPF right now? Um, he's around thirty, no? Maybe he's under thirty even, thirty and something. So he's born in ninety two. So he's 32 years old now. He'll be out when he's what, uh, 57? Maybe even less because they're gonna drop a bit, uh, no, like a few years. Yeah, I mean that, means that he he gets, you know, he'll get out. He'll have 30 years, you know. To okay, 20, so 10, 10 to 30 years after living in prison to to yeah. live. Okay, and Sam, you know what? We just saw that house that you showed us on the Bahamas, right? 
you're telling me that he doesn't have some money that he puts uh, on the side, like with all kinds of crypto wallets everywhere. Like, don't you think so? I think, it, it, like, imagine his mind as well. Like, I think an average DeFi user would have done it. So you're telling me that SBF doesn't have all kinds of wallets with a fortune on them waiting uh, for someone to use it? I don't know. For me, it seems like uh, I would bet on that. And on that, I bet like a pretty high probability. I, I think that his activities after he gets out will be uh, watched heavily and there won't be a possibility of that because, you know, all of that, all of that money, like if, if he gets out and he has all this money somewhere, right, uh, the, the IRS will essentially come in and, and ping him for tax avoidance or not declaring assets and uh, he'll go straight back to prison after that. Yeah, but you know, maybe he can uh, now uh, throughout this time, I'm sure that people know how to launder money and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, But it essentially gives him an exit. I mean, 25 years from now, he walks out of prison and he can just leave the States. He's a free man. He can go anywhere he wants, leave the United States, and use the and, and take his uh, crypto wallet with him. Exactly, know? and and who knows what happens at that point? Yeah, and he's uh, man. That's actually what can I tell you? That's weird. I well, really, think that, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I really think that uh, both of us, uh, even if we don't see it exactly in the same way. I think both of us were expecting that uh, he will be like uh, in prison, like for at least until he's like 70 or whatever. Yeah. Now he's going to get out when he's 57 or a little bit less than that. 55. With good right. behavior. Let's see what happens, man. I don't know. Well, a bit of a disappointing ending to the stream. Uh, we're going to wrap it up because we've almost gone two hours. Uh, we have the sentencing in now. SBF is going to prison for a long time, but what, what we all think is not long enough. Um, that was a great stream, to be honest, Sam, though. I, oh, really, great. I think it was one of our best streams ever, <laughs> to be honest. We had some drama at the beginning. We didn't agree on stuff, argue. Like we had, by the way, we haven't had such an argument like in a long, long while. Like uh, th This topic brings out a lot of emotion. Uh, you know, it's not like a lot of the stuff that we talk about uh, most of the time, which are like more, I don't know, uh, like uh, flat in a way, maybe even. And here it's like, uh, okay, this, this is an emotional thing. Money was uh, stolen in a way. I don't know. Money was lost. Yeah. People people were affected. Like 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 people say, like pe people lost their lives for it. Like uh, people, people took their lives probably because of it. So I just texted Alex and he said that uh, SPF caught a break here. Does he want to come back on the stream? Ask him. I'm, I'm sure he's got clients to go charge. <laughs> We've already taken up too many things. I wish Rex was here today. Uh, well, maybe we can try and ping him. Let, let's. No, no. I mean, I've, we, we've all got stuff. We need to move on with our lives. Okay. In, in general, <laughs> along with the SPF stuff. So uh, thanks everybody for spending this two hours with us. Uh, we had a really fun time talking about uh, SPF and how much of a shithead he is. Yeah, exactly. Even the even the the audience wants Rex. So um, for sure, man. For, for sure. sure. Rex, get out, get on here. Get on here, man. <laughs> Uh, we'll be well, back. I mean, you know, there's imagine a lot more how heated the debate would have been if Rex was on as well. Yeah, would have been great. <laughs> uh, but another time, another place. Uh, we'll have Alex back on soon. Uh, yeah, you man. can follow us on Leviathan News. We are streaming daily at 10 a.m. Thankfully, we caught a, a really lucky break with this one. I didn't actually know that the sentencing was taking place today, but it did. And uh, we thank you for for going through it with us. Good that you found out. Uh, thanks for a uh, brilliant host uh, as always and it was really fun by the way to have uh, Garrett on a weekday and to have uh, like Alex we haven't had uh, this kind of stream for a while and I really enjoyed it yeah and thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, remember those points like uh, get involved come submit headlines try to do stuff uh, with us earn some point uh, like uh, win some points I don't know how you even uh, say it and uh, okay let's go man bye folks Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow.